and welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with your readings for October the 7th through October the 13th. Welcome. If you're new, thank you for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy these readings and that you'll return. And if you are returning, thank you. I really appreciate your um, support and loyalty and um, love. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so now these readings come in three sections. The intro, which is this, then there's the astrology report, and then the tarot reading. And I will have skip times posted for each section in the show more section below. If you're looking on a phone, it's a little arrow pointing down. You click on that and you can get all the information. This is for your sun, moon and rising guys. So check out the other videos. The links to those will be below. Um, I am starting a tarot uh, course. And I'm starting it on Sunday. Some of you will get this before Sunday. Um, Sunday the 6th of October at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's going to be a six-week course. It's interactive. It's online. You can, you know, join it from anywhere in the world if, as long as you check your time. And, um, and if you miss the first one, that's no big deal because you will get the recording and um, you'll be sent the recording after each class. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go, I am going to take you on the magical journey of tarot. Um, okay. So now what's the next one? Um, oh, I have a, I have a Facebook group guys. And every two weeks I do a live feed within that Facebook group and it correlates with the full moon or the, um, new moon. And so we look at the chart with your sign and we see how you will, which area of your life will be affected by it. And um, I have tarot cards on hand and I answer questions just for the people who um, join in at the time. Um, so that's fun. It's a private group. You do have to request um, entrance into it, but I, you know, I approve everyone. <laughs> so ask for that. The link to that will be below. And um, what else? Uh, that's it. I think that's it. Oh, yes. If you would like a personal reading, please click on this, a personal more tailored reading, because guys, these are general readings. So sometimes they're specific because spirit needs to get through to somebody that needs to hear it, right? So take what resonates and leave the rest. And if you'd like a more tailored reading, click on this link and uh, it will take you to my website. You can see all the kinds of readings that I offer. Okay, without further ado, let's go to the astrology report, shall we? Are we? Hello and welcome to the astrology report section of your reading. Um, so what an incredibly powerful celestial sky we have this week, guys. So we start on October the 8th um, at 1.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Venus moves into Scorpio. Now, Venus is very, you know, she's the planet of relationships, love, um, finance, beauty. Um, and she's moving into Scorpio, which is very deep and intense. So Venus in Scorpio is very intense and deep, darling. So no shallow connections are tolerated at this time. Nobody, it's like you, you see people that aren't authentic and you have no time for them. It's about real deep, it's like we value that deep and real truthful relationships or in all areas, you know, friends, co-workers, you know, we just, there's no fear of intimacy during this time. It's like, you know, it, it's, it, it's like you crave intimacy. Um, and our libidos will, you know, rise up, darling. So it'll be a very hot and steamy time while uh, Venus is in Scorpio. And also it's a very, it's loyalty is demanded kind of thing. So it's very deep and very um, intense. Uh, now the shadow side of Venus in Scorpio is possessiveness and jealousy and perhaps manipulation and control in our relationships. So we have to resist the urge to do that. Although it might be strong, it depends on the relationship. 
Now, let's move on to October the 13th, guys. It is huge. It's massive. This is an incredible, look, 13, well, I'm not going to go into that yet. This is the, we have the full moon in Aries at 20 degrees. Now, the full moon is when the moon, the sun is opposite the moon, right? So, the moon's in Aries and the sun is in Libra because um, they're opposite signs. And it's actually the illumination from the sun, the light from the sun that illuminates the moon, right? So, it's directly opposite. It's lighting it all up. So, it's a full moon. Um, so this is a really powerful moon. And I'll tell you why. So, we have the moon at 20 degrees of Aries, we have the sun at 20 degrees of Libra, and at the top is Pluto at 20 degrees of Capricorn. Now, this is what we call in astrology a T-square. And a T-square is a challenging aspect, but it's motivating. It can be very motivating. Um, so, this could bring on growth, personal growth and self-awareness. Um, now, that brings me back to the number 13, right? Because this is a time of transformation. Pluto is all about transformation. It's all about death and rebirth. The number 13 is a very powerful number. Um, it represents uh, change and transformation. It's the death card in the tarot, and that's all of the death card is about death and rebirth, right? So, we need to let our old habits and behaviors die so that new positive habits and behaviors can pave the way for our path forward. Um, 13 is also the divine feminine number, right? There, are, And that comes from 13 moons in a year. So, that's that represents a woman's cycle, right? And the 13th day of the cycle is when she ovulates. Um, this was the day of the goddess, right? Worshipping the goddess. It was when patriarch patriarchal rule came in that 13 was considered unlucky. Yes, unlucky for you guys because you weren't in control, okay? <laughs> Don't make me go there, guys. Anyway, so this is like, it's like the opening uh, to the psychic within. Um, the full moon in Aries. Full moons are when things come to a head, right? When things come to light, when the moon shines a light on things, things that have been hidden to us previously that we haven't seen. So it's almost like we we'll, we'll get epiphanies. We'll see things. We'll be. We'll start to become aware of things that we weren't aware of before. Um, so it's an opportunity to change something about ourselves that have, has kept us from, has held us back and stopped us from moving forward. And when we change that, we can propel forward. Um, this T-square, this right, is what we call, it's a cardinal T-square because uh, Aries is a cardinal sign, Libra is a cardinal sign, and Capricorn's a card cardinal sign. So it is about action. Cardinal signs are, uh, you know, getting things started, getting up and doing things, right? So this is going to create a transformation from us. Now, the interesting thing is, right? So Cancer, you think that you're going to get away with it? No, Cancer, you are involved too because you are opposite Capricorn. And so you would make a grand cardinal cross, as they say. So this is a T-square, but your energy comes to make it, meet it and complete it. Um, then there may be challenges in your relationships at this time. The, the moon in Aries is all, all about finding your power. Where does your power lay? Where do I need to take initiative? Where can I say no? Sometimes saying no is kinder. It's a kinder thing to do. It's like stand up and say, no, 
I can't do that. Instead of saying, let me try, let me see if I can. No, I can't. It's physically impossible for me to do that. I'm sorry. Where can you set boundaries? Where can you say no? Now, at the same time, we've got Mars. Mars has moved into Libra, right? And Mars wants to be the nice guy. He's like, he's. it it's kind of goes again. He's, Mars is the soldier, right? And Libra is the diplomat. So Mars wants to be the good guy in Libra and it's, he, it goes against his grain. He can't express himself fully. So he's not direct. It's not kind of direct. But let me tell you something incredible that's also happening at this uh, new moon, full moon, sorry, is that Jupiter is also at 20 degrees. Now, Jupiter is at 20 degrees of Sagittarius, sending a beautiful uh, beam of light to the moon and likewise to the sun. It is trying to the moon and sextiling the sun. This is a lovely, beneficial energy. So we can expect to get paid, guys, abundance, you know, money coming in, you know, listen, this is kind of like good fortune, good luck. Um, so, you know, I don't normally condone this, but, you know, try the lotto, darling. And what's interesting, right? So the moon's 20, degrees. Pluto's 20 degrees. Jupiter's 20 degrees. And the sun is 20 degrees. 20, 20, 20, 20. And we are moving, you know, the uh, Pluto station direct and, um, and uh, Saturn station direct, and they're picking up speed, um, even though Pluto is a very slow planet, right? Um, they are picking up speed especially uh, Saturn and Jupiter, because Jupiter went direct the other week. So things are starting to shake and move. And there's a lot of change. There is no doubt about it. Um, there is change. Now, look, also at the same time as this full moon, we have Venus opposite Uranus. Now, Uranus is the planet of surprises, sudden happenings. It can be good and bad, but uh, Venus, you know, is about relationships. W you know, we could expect unexpected or surprise encounters with people. So maybe somebody from the past or somebody new, um, perhaps new clients that will bring in that abundance um, or opportunities. Let's see. It's very, uh, it's a very exciting and intense time, guys. <laughs> um, hang in there. But, you know, there's, there's some really, look, change sometimes doesn't feel great, but it's going to be an amazing change. It's where we become empowered. And it's also a very kind of karmic time. So we really need to look at how we behave, how we treat others. Um, it's very important to put kindness and compassion forward. And, and, and we are seeing things, look, Pluto digs deep and brings stuff up, right? And the particularly at this full moon, we will see things that we haven't seen before. We are seeing it with our leaders around the world. Change is upon us. Um, so exciting times. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let's go to the tarot card, shall we? Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your reading for October the 7th through October the 13th. And this is like my second time around. <laughs> <laughs> I have had to re-record nine out of my 12 readings because my audio software crashed. Something was telling me, check it, check it, check it. And I didn't listen. You know what? There's a lesson. I need to listen. And actually what I will do now is check every time I do a reading, <laughs> make sure that that software is up and running so I don't have to spend any more time re-recording. <sighs> ah, this is for Gemini. Gemini, what wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Gemini for this coming week? Three cards for Gemini, please. Let me pull that out for a minute. Turn it over. There you go. 
three cards for Gemini, please. Three cards for Gemini. Oh, there's two flew out, darling. Okay, that's one, two. One more card for Gemini. Oh, there it is. Lovely. Oh, you know what? It's interesting. It's like the same kind of cards are coming up. These are your clarifying cards. I have uh, shuffled off screen a little too much. I get a little carried away with my shuffling. That's <laughs> why so I try not to do too much on screen. I just like to do it once on screen. Okay. These are clarifying cards for Gemini. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information can you give Gemini through these clarifying cards for the week of October the 7th through the 13th? Please clarify. Oh, okay, lovely. And please clarify. And please clarify. Oh, gosh, they flew out. No problem. They were out darling okay let's take a look at your cards shall we okay the first card out is the temperance card clarified by the uh seven of wands and then you have the magician clarified by the king of pentacles then you have the Hermit, clarified by the Six of Cups. Okay, Gemini, the first card out for you is the Temperance card, and basically everything in moderation. It's about moderation. It's about balance. It's about not overdoing anything, good or bad. You know, everything. Don't watch the television. Don't shop too much. Don't... I don't mean don't watch the top, but everything moderately. Um, middle of the road. This is about trying to balance and, and keep everything um, in the state of quo. And the only way you can do that is through moderation. And look, you have the seven of ones, clarifying it. Sevens, I always say, are introspective. The seven of wands is when you have to kind of stand your ground, right? You have to stand up for your values or your belief system, even when it doesn't feel good. You know, it's like, don't compromise your values. So it's okay to be, you know, to compromise in some kind of way. Look, he's coming from a higher perspective, you see? He's not going to be um, easily influenced by his peers because he no look, I always use this anecdote when you're say if you're in a jury, right? And you've been on the jury for a week and then it's Friday. And if you guys don't come to a consensus, the whole jury, you're going to be sequestered over the weekend and nobody wants that. And so they're all rushing and they're all like guilty, guilty, guilty. And you just say, you know what? I'm, I, there's a doubt there. I just can't in my, you know, I just can't. You know, you're playing with somebody's life because you don't want to go home. You want to go home too. And then you're being like pressured by your peers. They all were like, just, yeah, he's guilty. What about this? What about this? So it's your, it's your job to say, I understand why you say that, but I think this, and you have to kind of, um, be diplomatic in how gentle diplomatic in how you uh in how you communicate your thoughts and feelings and your values and why you think it's important not to find this person guilty at this time so you can open up a dialogue um and and so it's a very uncomfortable you know when you're everyone's looking at you and they're like oh you know, it's because of her, we're not going home and blah, blah, blah. But you know in your heart that it's the right thing to do, even though you want to go home. So if there's a situation at all, anything like, I mean, that's kind of an extreme situation, right? This can be, you know, at work and, you know, I'm just throwing out this example. Say you have to decide where funds are going, you know, my brother's on a board like that, and he has to decide 
um, they get these letters in, in the corporate office and, and a group of these volunteers have to decide who gets what and for how much and they go through this. So you may be in a decision that you've got to, you know, you've got to, sometimes he stands up for someone that they want to pass over and he's like, well, look, you know, this person hasn't got this and how are they going to get that? I think we should help them. So, you know, it can be something like that when everyone wants to brush over it and you go back and you fight for that. You know, you fight for it because you think that that's right. You can be standing up for somebody who's bullying. I'm not saying put yourself in harm's way, never. You know, everything in moderation, right? Don't go nuts now. <laughs> Don't go out there. Here I come to save the day. You are not a superhero. <laughs> or are you, Gemini? <laughs> anyway, the next card out, maybe you are. You've got the magician, darling. Well, the magician comes into a reading and he comes into a reading when action is needed, right? Because perhaps you're f you're tired and you're like, oh God, nothing's going my way. I can't, you know, I'm not, I don't have the life that I want. I'm really, I can't, I won't, I blah, blah, blah. Like you're in that kind of frame, right? I'll never have it. I can't, I want to do this, but I'll never be able to do it. Well, the magician comes in saying, oh, yes, you can. You are the designer of your life. You have everything you require to create the life that you desire. Um, the magician has all four elements at his fingertips. Now, so he'll make something seemingly out of nothing, but those four elements are everything, right? They're the air we breathe. It's the water we drink and water our plants, the earth to and the soil to grow the plants and fruit from, right? So we grow our food and, and we water that. And then we have fire to keep us warm in the winter and to cook our food. Well, that's everything, right? And this is about getting creative. You can. This is telling you, darling, take some action, get up and do something. You know, sometimes when you're doing an action, it kind of gets the molecules moving, right? And then things start to come back to you. And look, clarifying it is the king of pentacles. He's the same message. He loves opulence and luxury and expensive items, and he surrounds himself with luxurious artifacts and possessions. But he works really hard. He's under no illusion that this stuff doesn't just land on your lap. You have to get up and you've got to work hard. You'll find him toiling in the fields with his subjects. He'll have his sleeves up. He's not afraid of hard work. He'll do it to make, you know, to, he knows that's what he has to do to, you know, to gain all this wealth and abundance. So you have two cards here that are saying you've got to take action. Gemini. So there's a strong message that you have to get up and make whatever you want. You've got to make it happen. And you have everything you need to do that. So don't lie to yourself. Don't believe the lies that you're hearing in your head. You have everything. All you have to do is get up and take the action. And you've got the hermit. And the hermit, he takes, you know, uh, he takes he removes himself from society because there's so much noise and he can't think and he can't hear himself think even, right? And he's hearing this op opinion and that opinion. And he comes into a reading when it's time to kind of retreat somewhat, right, from society in solitude and do some searching within. He goes into a cave and he voraciously reads. He takes in every single bit of information he can, right? And he he's in solitude and he meditates and meditates and he connects with the ethereal realm. And he emerges spiritually enlightened and wise beyond. So he's got all this knowledge and he's ready to impart that knowledge on 
anyone that comes he comes across. He has the staff, which represents, you know, authority and power, and he holds up a lantern. He's like the light at the end of the tunnel. He'll show you the way because he's learned everything he can, right? He is... Um, he holds up that lantern. That lantern uh, represents his mind. He's no longer ruled by his mind. And it's like meditation, right? It's not like you can control your mind. You can't, but you no longer allow your mind to control you. And that's the uh, sweetness and the secret of meditation. <clears throat> People think you're controlling your mind. You're not. We can't, but we can not be controlled by our mind. Now, clarifying this, now, clarifying this is the Six of Cups, and the Six of Cups is spending a little too much time in the past. This is about thinking about childhood. It's about reminiscing. It's about seeing it through rose-colored glasses, or perhaps your melancholy because of trauma in the past. Whatever the reason is that you're contemplating the past, you're there too much. It's time to come back into the present moment. It's time to come back. So it's it's an important to retreat, right? And it's important to go within. It's important to quieten your mind. It's important to learn everything everything you can and be wise, right? And and it's really important to remain teachable because. The hermit teaches, but he's teachable, right? He's, we can learn from each other. You can learn something from a child. You know, when you spend time with a child, it's like you can be gobsmacked listening to a child. The wisdom that comes out of children's mouths is amazing at times. So we can always learn. We're always learning and we're always teaching. So if you are too much in the past, Gemini, up in your head, come back into the present moment. It's okay to go back and visit a little bit, but it's not okay to stay there so that you're so distracted that you're not in your life, right? Remember, everything in moderation. And just, I will say one little thing about the hermit. Make sure that you are in solitude and not isolation. <laughs> There's a difference, right? Isolation is when you're kind of at home, like, you know, uh, watching the television or playing video games or something. You're isolating. You know, you don't want to be around people. But when you're in solitude, you're doing, you're going within, you're, you know, you're do, you're searching, you're connecting with your higher self, right? You are quieting the mind so that you can think clearly. And you're getting to know you, that solitude. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video, share it with friends, neighbors, family, co-workers. Um, comment. I am here to interact with you guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah! I love you all and I'll see you next week. <laughs>